Welcome, guys. It's another episode of The Neutral Corner. It's the master aficionado, Danny Glover. And today, I'm with my guest, Super Bradley Skeet. How you doing, man? Yes, Dan. Long time. Bro. Yeah, yeah, man. Good to see you. So, um, yeah, we was meant to do this in June last year, but I have to give you a big <laughs> shout out because you was my first ever interview back in lockdown when all I had to talk to was uh, people on Clubhouse. <laughs> I mean, it was mad. It was mad Zoom, <laughs> mad grainy. So I kind oh, of stepped yeah. up. So always enough respect for you, giving my first opportunity always, of a bro. of an interview, man. Um, so yeah, I remember the first interview we went through your. Uh, career like your 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 main fights and stuff like that so today we'll switch it up a bit I'm gonna ask you like questions to kind of reflect on your career um and what you're doing now and stuff like that so first of all we'll start with for uh, people just so they can get an idea of your background um what area did you grow up in um where's your parents from yeah. and yeah um, oh. Bro, I grew up in Battersea. That's where I was, I was born and bred. Grew up there, born in Tooting. Then um, my mum's English. My dad's from Barbados. Then we moved over. That's my connection, obviously, with sight box at Oldsfield. I grew up in Battersea, but I moved over to Penge when I was about seven. And that's where my childhood was there. All my like, my, my days, that's where I was there. Met, met Craig and, and everyone, got in school with them lot there. And uh, yeah, that's where, that's where I was from, bro. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking, are you, I was thinking, because I know this name Skeet, because I know some, I know some uh, woman called Marlene Skeet. Yeah. And I was thinking, are the only person I know called Skeet? And she's from Barbados. Okay. So I was yeah. thinking, you must be Bayesian. So, that yeah. name's like Smith, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Skeet and Ben, that's like big out in Barbados, them names yeah. there. So, yeah, man, that's big. That's big in the game. So, how was it growing up in Penge? And because um, Penge is an area where, a lot of people don't even know where it is if you tell yeah. them it's like saying Abbey Wood. It's like, you know, the mad ends like, it's like, where is that? So, what was it like yeah. growing up in an area like that? Yeah, it was, do you know what I mean? It had its good and bad, do you know what I mean? But I, where I had boxing, I always kept myself to myself. I just, I don't, I didn't go, go about and hang about on the streets and that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, I was always good, I was cool. So, but yeah, like, it's, 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 like everywhere has got its good and bad. But yeah. it was, it was, where I had boxing, I, I stayed away from. From the bad, should I say? Oh, okay. So, did you go primary school in? Um, I went for a bit. I went to uh, James Dixon in Annerley. Okay. And then um, I went to Saint John Rigby, the secondary school. Yeah, but, yeah. weren't there too long before I left. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's what I was going to touch on because I remember Jody, Craig's yeah. sister, who everyone knows from yeah. here at the old shows. Here's Jody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what what was it um, that made you ultimately decide that? you know, school was it for you or did, did you go, did you get homeschooling afterwards or? Yeah, do you know, it was me. I just, I was just on, but like, it was obviously bad for my, my mum and dad and that, because I just was, I just used to tell anyone who could listen. I said, listen, don't worry. I'm going to make it in boxing. I'm going to be world champion. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I just, all my life, I was just boxing. That's all I knew. That's all I done was box. So yeah, school, I just never got on with school, even primary school. I just never got on with school. And then, yeah, it just got to a point where I was just not going. I was just, obviously my mum and that was thinking I was going to school and I just was not going to school. But I'm not proud about it. It's not something like I'd boast about, but I just yeah. didn't get on. But like, I was true to my world. I don't, I don't well in boxing, so. Yeah, yeah, so it's not, yeah, I know what you mean. So it's not something you're going to advocate to the kids. Yeah. You, you'll still tell them, stay in school, <laughs> be cool. But it's not, maybe it's not for everybody. And yeah. you had your eyes set on what you wanted to do and you pursued it and yeah. you, you went through with it. It's not yeah. like you've, you know, you had a pipe dream and then exactly, yeah. come 17, 18 years old, you decided, oh no, I want to be something else and no, I want to do course. something else, so. And I miss quite a lot as well. Obviously being on GB, I was going away a lot, going on training camps and boxing abroad. I, was, um, I miss quite a lot of school with that. So I'm, boxing was always, always my Taking thing, up so. your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so what was your first memory of boxing and how yeah how did, how did you get into it what made you get into it or who yeah. made you who influenced you to get into it my my dad really he works with Sid Khan and he owns Earlsfield and he had he's got two boys who I grew up with uh David and Aaron yep. and uh they obviously used to go to the gym and that but my mom was n never keen on me boxing she'd never let me go and then I got to about seven eight and she said yeah I can go and from then I remember walking into 
also and I remember Richard Williams being there and he, he secret yeah the secret <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, seeing him train and he he, uh, he was looking up to them sort of people he turned pro and I just that's what I knew then Naz was my my idol he I used to watch Naz all the time and that's when I used to watch I said yeah that's gonna be me that's and that that was my first real memory of going going boxing and going elsewhere and from from the get go I remember going there and from the first day I went I never looked back I always I always went never I didn't ever stop or nothing I just stuck with it yeah so you had an extensive amateur career um from what I remember I remember before I had my first bout you know when people go around to club sparring so yeah. I remember uh I was at the Lynn and John Atkins said he took me a couple of boys Daniel Norain Sean Watson we came down and sparred you guys I sparred yeah. one guy I sparred you and I sparred Aaron and I remember I was like 71 kilos you must have been about 60 kilos Probably, or 57 yeah. yeah and how old are you now 35 35 okay so yeah you're a year below me so yeah but I remember that I was like rushing in trying, you know you know when you're, you're like a civilian you ain't had no bouts so you're just trying to use pound you're just like bop 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 so you gave me my first boxing lesson because normally I was sparring guys who had like we all had no bouts yeah, together because yeah. I remember our first cl our first club show most of us was having our first bout so when we come over to your gym you'd have you'd obviously I could tell you definitely had bouts yeah. so yeah you, you boxed my ears <laughs> off that so that was, a, that was a lesson I punched up the guy I don't even remember he probably did he probably stopped boxing yeah like, he probably weren't that but you and Aaron was good but I remember you specifically uh, yeah, yeah you you yeah <laughs> you, you, was, you you were dancing rings and punching my head in so yeah no nah, that's so yeah so do you out of all your bouts in the amateurs, yeah. what would you say was um, some of your, the most notable opponents that you fought and the guys you beat? Do you know what, even looking back now, it's hard. There's, I've mixed with like loads, big stand up things. Do you know what, I always, people always ask me, I always show them a picture. Obviously they're not opponent of mine, but there's a picture of a box against, uh, box England versus America. And there's got a picture of, me, James DeGaulle, Billy Joe Saunders, and Tyson Fury. Oh, wow. Just all just in a line, just like standing there. And I always show people that picture. That's the that's the people I was mixing with. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. look at they all went on to win world titles. I used to say, like, oh, I'm, I'm the next one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously, that's all, all stopped now. I got close, but yeah, then it didn't, didn't happen. But that's the that's the people I was mixing with. That's the level I was at. Do you know? So, yeah. But yeah, opponent wise, that, yeah, mix, mix, with, mix with loads. At the top of my head, I can't even think, but. I've been been around it a long, long time. Yeah, because you was yeah you was on the England squad properly. So yeah, what was it? So what was the titles that you won? I know you won NABCs. NABCs, yeah, and that, that I, I got to six national finals, but just just won the one. But three schoolboys, two NABAs, and two NABCs, but won one. Was it yeah. the Class A one? Uh, the senior one. I lost in the Class, I think, B final, and then won the senior uh, NABC. Yeah. Okay, oh. yeah, yeah, because I remember in the semis we was in Bristol in Broad Plains. Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, uh, most definitely. So then you ultimately decide to turn pro, which you know most fighters do. Um, you did you start off with Alan Smith? Al Smith, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what was it about him that you saw where you thought, yeah, this is the right guy for me to train me? Yeah, I. You know, I was when I was. Um, I was good friends with James DeGaulle, so I was always with James. So I was training a bit with Jim McDonald when James turned pro. Okay. And then uh, I'd done a bit of training there, but James was obviously like, he, he just won Olympics and he was and he was doing his thing. So um, he had his, he had obviously had his career. And then I just thought it, it's, well, like, it would have been better for me to, to go off and do, do my own thing. So I was looking for a, a, a trainer and then um, I was good friends with Louis Petit and he just turned pro mm -hmm. and was training with Al. He said, come down and have a session. And to be honest, I, I went and trained with Al and, and we clicked good. Um, Sam Webb just beat Anthony Small. So oh, I yeah, just yeah, remember yeah. being in the gym and seeing the British title and I was like, yeah, I want that. Yeah. And then that, I was like, same with Sid and also that from the first day I went there, I just clicked and yeah, never looked back. Then yeah, we had a, we had a good career together. Yeah. So, oh, I forgot to talk about like when you was on your uh, England squad and stuff. Yeah. Do you remember it? What was your more, most fondest memories of being on the squad? And is there any like interesting, <laughs> funny stories you can remember being on the trip? 
yeah, on I any can, trips anywhere. You can imagine with the boys, like we just named them, like the likes of Tyson, Tyson Fury, Fury, Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Yeah, that's Billy gonna be Joe, that's yeah, gonna be Billy, mad. Uh, we, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. One one time, um, we was up we was up in Sheffield and we come out out the EIS and to literally the hotel's opposite. You can walk there in five minutes, but we all had these car parked outside. I said, jump in, I'll give you a lift back. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who else jumped in the car for the lift home, but. Bill being Bill, there's a little park there. So instead of turning right, he's turned left into the park and just started doing donuts. And but it was dark, and then uh, he, he was like, "Oh, like, just like just nearly hit a dog." But it's not no normal dog. It's a police dog. It's a policeman walking his dog. And then it was what, just, on duty. Yeah. And then we put like he was like, "Get out of the park." He'd come out the park, and then you kind of just imagine the police like was just <laughs> everywhere surrounding us. And Bill being Bill, he's saying, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take the chase sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting in the back of the car, it's like, what the hell is going on here? Did, but yeah, we got we got caught and uh yeah, I think he got in trouble, big big trouble about that. But, what, yeah, that's the, that's was, one story. Was uh, the coach is on to you. Yeah, because they all seen it going on, they're just seeing because literally we just walked out the training. Uh, so yeah. Was Gary there? Um I think Gary was there. Um, yeah, I know he's he's nuts. Uh, was it? T- Terry Edwards was there. I yeah, think. Yeah, Terry yeah. Edwards. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was funny, but not not funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And speaking about when you're saying you did, a, the English squad took up most of your time. So, yeah. do you think that you got a lot of education of while she was yeah. on there? And do you, and also, do you think that benefited you where? you got to associate and hang around people you necessarily would never meet in the walks of life. Yeah. People from the north of England, exactly. the Midlands, yeah. and yeah. you'd, you know- You've make- got friends for life now from young, growing up with, with the boys and that, you've got like friends for life and you yeah. make good friends. And it's life lessons. Imagine going, like I was going to war-torn countries when I, when I was a teenager fighting. And yeah. that, uh, for instance, once we went to a, a trip to Bosnia and boxed out in Bosnia. Bosnia and heard, I can't even pronounce that second yeah. word. Yeah. <laughs> but we like, we was like walking and we, that we'd have to have like army escorts in that because it was just like it was still it, it wasn't obviously war war going on in but it was like could it kick off any time sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I meant like see being that like, teenager and walking around like that it's like life lessons and and you can't you don't get that in school yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't get that on the no, ends <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah and as I said you'd have met people from Scarborough dance exactly. to, like yeah. different boxes and you hang yeah. around them and you're like oh wow I would have thought that. You know, you get hear things like oh, northern numpties, mm. southern softies, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you get to realize, oh no, we actually like you got yeah. more similarities than yeah. you actually realize. So, yeah, some some things you can't teach and get out of a book. You exactly. got to actually do the practical exam. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So with your, you know, you turn you turn pro. What would you? So you had. So what would you say was your your most learning fight during your learning period stage, mm. what would you say, who would you say was the the fight where you thought, yeah, this was the, where I learned yeah. the most there? My first fight with uh, Pete McDonough, he, it was my ninth fight and it was my first title fight. Yeah, and I was there yeah, that night. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, that was like, I remember being in that fight and thinking, welcome to pro boxing. Cause it, like, it was, it was like, I had to dig in and it was a tough, tough fight. Yeah. And, Peter's box everyone, he's experienced, he knew he knew what he's doing, he's been around and I was still like young and fresh to it. And uh yeah, he, he gave me a close fight. It was a it was a good hard fight. And like, and that that was like, yeah, welcome pro, to pro boxing. Yeah, yeah. I would have I would have chose that one as well. Mm-hmm. That was that was a good fight. And um it was close up until the middle and then you started to use your boxing skills yeah. and, and actually you I know had to dig in though. That, yeah. I think I, I was only one night, ninety-eight, like two points. I think I can't remember what what the score was, but it was it was close. I yeah, it being uh, close. It was a good fight, man. Yeah, yeah. So, also, you so you won the southern area. Yeah. Did you win the English, English. or the yeah, English, English as well against Colin Lines? That was a yeah, 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 yeah. That was a. Uh, there's a story to tell about that fight too. He, a few, well, it must have been a, more than a few months, but he come down to the gym to spar. And I remember, I remember being at York Hall when he, he beat Lee Purdy. Uh, I think that was a British title fight. Yeah. And he and it was a good fight. I was, and I remember being there thinking, these are tough, man. Like these are good fighters. And then so being in in the ring and my name getting like mentioned with him to fight him. And I remember that fight straight away stuck up, stuck in my mind. And I sparred him. I remember he come to Ibox and sparred, and I had a good spar with him. And I thought, yeah. I'm, 
I'd like to fight him. I'd, I'd beat him, sort of thing. And it weren't the case of looking over him more because when the fight got made, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'll deal with him proper. Like I can, I can do a job on him. And and again, coming out, I I done what I done. Was on my jab and 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 was comfortable. Then all of a sudden, bang, got caught to the top of the head and had to take a knee. And yeah. then I was like, Shh, like, what's going on here? This has never happened before. Yeah. But yeah, like again, that's a that was a good learning fight. Good ten rounds for me. Got up and. And one obviously, but yeah, that was another that being in with such an experienced pro, that was that was good. Yeah. So then you won the 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 British, but before that, mm. or what would you say, or even it might be that, when do you feel the first time you felt the pressure of I'm up against it here, my back's mm. against the wall, I've got to, I've got to prove because the people probably mm. got me as an underdog here. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. fight would you say that was? That would have been the Frankie Gavin fight, the first time I boxed for the British title. Yeah. That was, uh, I, like, I was young, coming through just, like, literally on, on the way up. He he was, he was like, the star. He was a guy, mean, yeah. The Olympian. He was, he was Frank Warren's guy. Do first you know world mean? champion amateur. Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. So, Gold big, big things were getting spoke about him. And he, um, he, he, like, I was, I was, the underdog, do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I, I knew, I knew I had the beating of him. I'd, um, I'd been on, in, like, like I say, been on England camps with him and everything. He was a class fighter, but I think as an amateur, yeah. But as a pro, he, he didn't really show me too much that that I thought, oh no, I'm up against it. But don't get me wrong, didn't didn't look over him, and and I, and I, that was the the my first big major fight. And to this day, I still believe I won. It was a close fight, and mm. and. I, I believe I'd, I'd done enough to win, but it was it was an experience for me to then go on and then go and win the British title because I think if I didn't have that experience of of coming so close, but so far I might have not pushed and and had it the second time round. Yeah, and I've said to you before, not so no one don't think just because he's here. I thought you won the fight as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and I always keep it a buck with Bradley because I remember yeah. I thought you was going to, remember that time when I said, oh, I think Dudley's going to stop you. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Then, when you, and then right after you, too, you yeah. had a mad steak out and he was that like, was oh yeah, Dan, fight. so what do you say about me getting stopped? I was like, oh, <laughs> no, I had to I, keep it moving yeah. from your court. Do you know what? That's uh, even them fights there, they go over my head. I forget I've been mixed with them. them yeah, them, Dudley, Vernon Forrest, Vernon Forrest's son. Yeah, some good fights, man. Yeah. Been in, been in with some good people. Yeah, so then you won the British title against um, Sam Eggington. Yeah, yeah. So, what? How? How? Yeah. How? How was your mindset going into that fight compared to the first time you got your yeah. um, first British? Because a lot of people I was up against it then. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because he was just he, yeah, was he was tearing through people. Up. Yeah, yeah. He was eating people up, and I was like, oh, when am I going to get a break? Sort of thing. And the yeah, fact, get an easy touch. Obviously, was in Birmingham in his backyard. It was all set up for him on a, on a on a rival show on a matchroom show. Obviously, I was with Frank at at, B, at Box Nation. It was Box Nation, and I was like, I was up against it. Do you know what I mean? It mm. weren't set up for me to win, but I was so determined, and I, I weren't losing that night. No way. Yeah. No way. Funny enough, it must be a St. John Rigby thing. Shall I tell you why? Because <laughs> then. When you go, if you fast forward, mm. Craig, the first British title shot, he lost to Frank Baglioni, obviously, yeah. five days notice. And then the second time, he had to go to Birmingham, mm. cross over the street to fight yeah. Shakan Peters on mm. Channel 5. Yeah. It was all billed for him. Mm. Shakan's looking great, won the yeah. boxer yeah. tournament and all yeah. sorts. And he had, and he got in the he second time it. running. So just like it. you yeah. did. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Rigby boys, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um and as we say, persistence yeah. beats resistance. So if you don't get it the first time, you keep on plugging. So what would you say was your proudest moment um, as a as a? When did you? What was yeah? What was the when you had that the biggest buzz night? Yeah, what, that that against Sam. That, that one. Was, yeah, that was that, that was a big night for me. That yeah, was, yeah, that was a, a very big night for me. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, uh, first time round, it weren't meant to be, but. To, and to win the British title, that was my boyhood dream. Coming in and seeing that British title when I when I oh yeah when Sam Webb yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was I the, the, I was always wanting to win it. But and this is what I said to you before: not many people like they want to jump British level and, and move on quick. But my thing was not just winning; I wanted to win it outright, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I was. I, I had arguments with Warren; they wanted me to move on and probably missed out on a few opportunities when. I could have vacated it and and but my I was adamant and 
I'm sitting here now as an outright British champion and not many people can say that. Yeah, well, it seems you've set the pace in, in, in another regards because first you've done it with the Central Rigby thing, going up to Birmingham second time around. And then this, this now, Denzel Bentley in mm. April, he's going to fight uh, Kieran Smith for the uh, and he's going to defend the British middleweight title. And if, when, if he wins that, yeah. then he gets to keep it outright and he's okay. another Battersea born guy so setting another thing so you're you're setting trends (laughs) so you're not even realizing (laughs) the legacy you're leaving behind (laughs) is the energy so yeah so no it's a good so how did you feel that night when you did actually finally win it outright like was that uh, yeah how did you feel that night yeah because that's a thing many people don't do yeah that was a again that was a big relief because i just knew that the the build-up i was i was doing i was flying that british level I i was flying and had it quite quick I was it was a quick turnaround so for me to get get it out right it was a it was a big big relief for me to it was a good fight with Dow Evans um so yeah man it was that was to get out right and yeah I was a bit bit confident I've got t-shirts and that done with outright on the front and yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, you got, put that straight on you got, in the yeah, ring you got, you got to speak yeah. it into existence exactly so yeah no nah, that was like like I say no one can take that belt away from me now I've got it for life yeah 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 so yeah you got yeah so you've got children and stuff so they can see it and exactly, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thing that will spur them onto whatever career path they decide to do in life with a working canary wall for whatever they yeah. decide to do work, go to buy they could see the world just like yeah. you did yeah so yeah that's a good um inspirational thing that you've done there what would you say was like the toughest part of being a boxer for those you know young ones coming up coming through what would you what yeah. what do you remember being like the toughest parts of being a boxer just like obviously sacrificing things but to me it wasn't it wasn't looking back now i didn't miss out like but obviously you see seeing your friends going out and going parties and doing doing whatever doing this doing that but i wouldn't say i wouldn't look at that as a bad thing because looking back now i didn't miss out and it weren't nothing i was missing out on yeah yeah i like i, I I was they was probably looking at me wanting to do what I was doing, but yeah, that that is a big sacrifice. You, but it's not just that you miss like you miss uh, like friends and families, like parties birthdays. and birthdays. Like there's been Christmases where I've had to train over Christmas, not had a had a good Christmas, or like do you know what I mean. I miss I've got a daughter missing 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 out on her like birthdays and Parents things. I've been in, in training camps and things like that. But that that's the hard bit of it. But like I say, when when they're all there, when I'm winning and and it's all good then that's that's when it's beneficial that's when it all pays off yeah, like, yeah. that's that's what I, I obviously do it for yeah so talking about parties actually i always wondered i remember there was a there was a picture i saw years ago on myspace <laughs> where it was you and james the girl and he was all cut up his legs oh yeah so yeah. what happened was it like a quad <laughs> he, bike what, what happened yeah he he uh his mom and dad had i, I don't know if they still go there but they had an um, apartment in Ayanapa in uh in cyprus so we used to go iron up all the time and yeah. he uh yeah we obviously had had bikes out and that and then uh, he come off the bike and was all like busted yeah uh, well, how yeah. did he come off what was it? what happened do you, do you know, remember what happened I, do you know what i remember just following him. i think i had a quad and he had a bike like oh the then, moped yeah i was just following and he i think he just turned and the, the front wheel just must have just slipped and <laughs> i just remember him skidding across the floor I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I, I was more worried about the, the man at the hire shop, yeah, because in the space of time we was there, I smashed up a quad, um, showing off doing that, that. I had a reverse gear on my quad, so okay. I'm there, just come out of the beach, reverse and turn, and the quads just flipped up and just like smashed the bits. So I was like, oh. And then, so, yeah, we smashed the quad, then we had a buggy. But we both were sitting in it. Was dri- he was driving so fast? You know when you steer, like the thing just still goes forward and just yeah. smashed up. And now he's just smashed up a back. So I was more worried what the man, what the hire shop was. Gonna yeah, he's say. thinking I ain't hiring <laughs> nothing to these brothers again. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, because I remember he skills all. Yeah, like, what was the hell happened there? Yeah. But yeah, that was mad. But yeah, it was good that it weren't nothing ma- majorly severe mm, no, yeah. uh, injury. So, um, so during your time with. Even let's go back to even Earlsfield. What yeah. would you say some of the gems and uh, the key things that Sid mm. would have taught you growing up to become like a man and just yeah. how to navigate through life and just because he, he's he's quite a deep guy he, and yeah, serious guy, serious guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so strict and that, but discipline. He's probably from the get go. He's so strict and 
for us, it was discipline. Like he still now here for my phone and I think, oh, like I see his name and think, oh, Sid's ringing like, oh, what have I done sort of thing. Like, yeah. And that's that respect obviously I've got for him and I'll always have for him because he's, he's, he's been around me my whole life. Do you know what I mean? He's known me since I was a baby and he's like family to me. I look up to him and, uh, but yeah, they, they installed that discipline. He installed that discipline. I was had my mom and dad around, but like, your coach, like, do you know what I mean? You want, yeah. to, you want to impress him, and and you spend a lot of time him. around him. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, from from the get go, that that discipline and and do you know what I mean? The respect and everything all come from there. I'm, I'm around him a lot. Yeah. Was there any like quotes he said or anything that stuck out in your mind? Something he told you, like, listen, Brad. Probably in life. I can't say him on here. <laughs> <laughs> There's you probably know, a lot of swearing in there. All oh, right, well, <laughs> it's a family show, guys. <laughs> No, you know what it's his like, Yeah, no, I know what it's like. Yeah, he, like for anything, like, do you know what with him? He's 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 strict in that, but you could go on to him for anything, any problems, anything that and and talk to and it'd get it sorted, do you know what I mean? Yeah, my friend Daniel Parker, he says that a yeah. lot. And I remember when Sid went to um his wedding and I was like, Wow, man's man's flown over. I was like, yeah. he must really like you because that guy turned yeah, up for yeah. enough. No one's thinking if he's yeah. just because you know he fobs a lot of people off. Like mm-hmm. you try like you, I've been at the shows and people try and beg it with him because yeah. obviously he ain't and he's it. like, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> so if he's got time for you, like you, you yeah. must like he must like really you know. rate you. He ain't gonna like just talk to you. He's like, do you remember um Terry from South Northern Victory? Yeah. Yeah. He's another old one, school, he's just a scary school, brother, yeah. like yeah. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and then with um, so when you was training with us, was mm. Eddie Lamb in Ed, your team uh, as well? Ed still now, like I still I'm speak to them and close to them now. Yeah. I mean? I've got, now it's it's obviously good. I've got obviously training fans myself. Now I'm going to our box tomorrow for, and take take some people there sparring. So yeah, Ed I speak to our I still speak to, but Ed's a Ed's a good good guy, man. He's he's proper stuff, Ed. Yeah. So, what what things would you say that you took from them that they they left a um, a standing mark like on you? Like, yeah, you know, what would you say they they taught you and things? Just like again, just with Al, he he was he he was always safety first with Al. He would always like he would pick the right fights and and he guided my career good. And obviously, I got what I wanted out of my career. So he done he done the right thing for me. Yeah. Um, and it's Ed Ed was he's like. He was always there for me. Do you know what I mean? If I needed anything, he'd, if I need to go sparring, he'd be there. He'd take me sparring. If I needed anything, he would get it. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was just always there, always at the end of the phone, can ring for anything. And still now, like I say to this day, I can ring him if I need anything, need help or advice or anything. They're, they're there, both, both of them really. Yeah. So, into, would you, would you say, what sort of politics in boxing do you? <laughs> <laughs> No, we're not getting into that bit. We're not into that bit. Yeah, I'm saying that in general. What what sort of politics um, did you incur over the years of being a pro that you think, and maybe other pros as well, would have gone through that a lot of people, f- fight fans, don't necessarily know, like the intricacies of things where they, you know, they ask questions or oh, why this, why that, why this happening, why ain't that happening, but yeah. people don't know. What's that like, mm. sort of things? What's what's going on? Yeah, That's- I think. <clears throat> do you know what? With me, I think. I think obviously the first bit of controversy I I witnessed, and it was me with the Frankie Gavin fight. I know he because he was top boy. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it yeah. Was obviously Frank's, but we was both with Frank. But he he was the home yeah, yeah, corner. Yeah. He was everything was for him. He's the A side. Yeah, I, like. I didn't get. I didn't feel like I got a fair crack at that. Like when it come to to the to the to the nitty gritty, I think obviously it was all set up for him. But yeah. like you can't, you, you can't, it's, it's boxing and then they, they can't look at it. Everyone knows about like what goes on and, and what goes like, on. But um, yeah, for, for me, like it, it was, I was always the, the, the home fighter really because I was the ticket seller. I was the, 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 the one coming through sort of thing. So yeah, for me, um, I didn't really have to experience it too tough, um, but People don't see like the, the small horse sort of fighters, and that they go through a hell of a lot. That like, they got they they got to sell a certain amount of tickets before they even even think about earning a pound. Yeah, <clears throat> and they got paid for their opponent, pay for this, pay for that. And if they ain't selling the tickets, they ain't they ain't they ain't. Earning, I'm sure. they're, they're, I know some per- fighters personally who 
who are at a loss, they're fighting and <clears throat> sorry, and gotta and gotta like pay the promoter sort of thing. So Yeah. Yeah, I, that side of boxing I I don't like people don't see that and all that hard work and training that people put in, they don't see that side of things sort of thing. So Yeah. That's that's the sort of bit I don't like about boxing. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say was your lowest point during your career? And like, yeah. Yeah. And what, what was, what, why do you think that, that occurred? Yeah. For me, it was, uh, when I, when I went to, uh, Spain, when I went to Bilbao to fight for the European title. Um, Kerman La Raja. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a tough fight, but, um, yeah, I just, that fight, things went on like in, in on fight week and I, I've never ever like spoke about it. No one knows like, but I shouldn't have took a fight really. I should have, looking back now, I, I was a bit, like naive and that to think that like, I can't pull out now sort of thing but yeah, yeah I shouldn't I shouldn't have uh, been in but I, it was me I was the fight I was that had that mentality do you know what I mean yeah, I've got yeah, yeah. thing but um, listen I lost to the better guy but people knows me and who knows looking in that fight yeah he was strong in that but they know me they they know that that weren't me in there you could have given much yeah, you could have given much better yeah, account of yourself yeah, than that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, that's, that's, that was just a learning thing for me and probably my mentality of oh no it's all right it'd be all good but yeah like, things things happen and and that's that's the way it was yeah, I, yeah I would always obviously i don't fight now but looking back i would i would never have uh done that yeah yeah well as you say you live and learn mm. and if if one of your fighters are going through something similar mm, yeah. and you're able to spot the signs, you'll know, Definitely, you'll yeah. tell him, listen, mate, yeah. just let's reschedule exactly, or yeah. take some There's time off. Another day, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you took time out mm. after that fight. Um, a lot of people probably thought maybe you, you wouldn't have seen you again because you took, how long was it? Um, I had some time off after that, but then I had, a, I had a combat fight and won. Then it was when I lost to Ramirez, when I got stopped by Ramirez. That's when I took a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, uh, then, how long did you take yeah, after it, the Ramirez fight? Uh, it probably was, probably was two years. Okay. Yeah, so what what was it? What made you say, "Listen, I got I got I got to get back and do yeah, this, man." I um, t- to be honest, I I took time off and I was, I was uh, I had a, obviously I had a conversation with Al and Al Al like said to me that like, he thinks it's like, obviously time to call it a day sort of thing. And, oh, okay. Um, so obviously that that's that was my training. That's who that's who I, I, I if what he says goes, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you have that respect for the trainer, that's what that's what you think. So in my head I think, oh, I was done sort of thing. And but I had some time off, which I needed probably needed some time off anyway. And then um yeah, I, everyone was telling me, Oh, you're mad, like why you stop sort of thing, like you you no way you're not you're far from done and I was hearing it, but I was just living life. I would probably just doing like I was going here doing this going here do, like, like just living a life what I probably like I said from back in the day like I said making sacrifices and not going like doing things yeah. going on holidays going parties like doing that I've never done that and experienced that before so yeah in, in um, jacuzzi yeah. tub in um, Marbella <laughs> what was that hotel I stayed in that one as well what was it called uh, Sisu. Sisu Sisu that's Sisu. the one <laughs> yeah but um do you know what I mean? That that was a part of life that I probably look back at now, think, "What was you stupid? Like, what are you doing? Like, that 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 ain't that ain't life." Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, just yeah. stunning. For, for, I'm sorry, that's for Instagram and yeah. look, like looking like for who? For what? What am I achieving from that? Do you know what I mean? Spending all this money for what? Like, yeah. But it's it's a life lesson. Do you know what I mean? And I probably had to go through that to realize that like, what is that all about? Like, so yeah, so I had my time off and then. Uh, obviously COVID and all that come around then. And then, so I had another year of doing nothing. But when that was on, I started doing a bit of PT and I was in the gym and I knew I was getting the feel for it again. Cause you know, when you're in the gym, like I'm walking past a bag, giving it a little jab and getting a little reflection in mirror shadow box in there. <laughs> so I knew, I knew, like I knew I wasn't done cause I, I still had that. And then I would start hitting a bag and doing a bit of training here and there. And then uh, how it come about, I um, I was training a young kid, Lightning Junior, who's doing well now. Um, and we went up to Sheffield and he loved Naz. Obviously, I, Naz was my my idol too. So um, we went up to, to Sheffield to train at, at the Ingle Gym just to, cause yeah. I'd never been there, even though I'd, all them years ago, I was in Sheffield training and being up in up, up for the GB team. I never ever went to Ingle Gym. Yeah. So we went up there and 
um, I just, when I walked in, I just, you know, when you just have that buzz and that, you just feel something. And I just, I knew I, knew I wasn't done. And I went and had a, a chat with Dom and he was like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, you might, you're here, you might as well do a bit of training yourself. And yeah. I remember I jumped in and had a few body spars and everyone was, the boys and that was up there going, you're mad, like, you, you shouldn't be stopping that. Like, you got so much more to give. Yeah. And then I was still like, mm, I'm in an arm. And Dom basically said like, listen like if you want to come up and train you're more than welcome and it's like it needs to, you need to do it now though because if you do it in a few months or anything it'd be too late just you've got to do it now you're here now and literally i again like i went around things the wrong way i come home and then i was just said yeah i'm going chef i'm moving to sheffield i'm, yeah. I'm going to train up there and then I, I was literally the next week i was packed and gone and moved up to sheffield yeah but i spoke obviously i spoke to al and told him that's that's what i wanted to do obviously i was coming back and he, he was it was good like it was it never left on bad terms or nothing i just needed a fresh start if i was coming back i just wanted a, a fresh start and that's obviously how, how it all come about going to sheffield and and stay training with dom up, up yeah sheffield. so you was a big naz fan growing mm. up as a kid did you yeah. used to buy the um videotape all all of it yeah, yeah all the the natural whole, board, yeah, thriller it. license yeah. to thrill yeah, all, all that type of, of stuff yeah. okay so yeah. i had all them yeah. videos as well so how because i've never been in that gym mm. but how was it when you walked through those doors and you saw those all colorful lines. lines on the yeah, floor yeah, yeah. and you saw that bag where you flat around it bam, yeah. like, so what what was that feeling because i can only imagine yeah. it, it's mad because like it to be in that gym, obviously, where your idol trains, like, is, is yeah. mad. And I'll tell you a funny story with going back to the Frankie Gavin fight. He, Naz phoned me. I, was, I had the weigh-in. And we was going, uh, me and my dad, I think my bro my brother-in-law was there. My nephew's come to my weigh-in. We was on the way back from the weigh-in, going Nando's for something to eat. And this mad number was ringing my phone. And everyone who knows me knows I don't answer numbers. I don't know, I don't, like, I don't, like, I don't, just private numbers, numbers, I don't know, I don't answer them. Like, yeah. unless you leave a message, let me know who you are. I'm not answering it. You ain't getting through to me. Yeah. But it's like a mad number. And it rang and then rang again, then rang again. I thought, ah, oh, do you know what? Let me just answer. Then I answered, I was like, oh, you're right. And then, and then it was like, yo, like, yo, champ. I was like, you do that this? Point. It was like, it's Naz. And, but you know, you know the voice, but you're thinking, who's winding me up? I said, yeah. oh, who, all right, ha ha, like. Yeah, good impersonation. Then it was him. It was that he, like, he was like, yo, like, it's nice, like. And he told me he's coming to the fight and all that. I'm like, what? And you know, when you're just like, this is crazy. Yeah. And then uh, he was actually, he come to the fight. He was at the fight. And yeah, like, from then, we kept in contact. So his boys obviously was training and that they was in Sheffield at the time when I went up there. So we are speaking to the boys and that. And yeah. yeah, it was mad how it all come around. Like, so it's, yeah, like someone who I looked up to so much and like still now, like I look at him and like, he's like king. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So is that the first time you met him at your fight? No, I, I met him before when I was little. I went, when he boxed Tom Johnson. Okay, um, Tom I Boom went, Boom Johnson. Yeah, I went I went to the uh, the way in the press conference and all that. I, and then I met him then. I got all pictures with him and that then. So, yeah, yeah that, so. 1998, yeah, right up a cut, finish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on. It, yeah. <laughs> the master yeah, official, the, I know. Yeah. The Luna fan, didn't he? Won the yeah. IBF that night yeah. too. Yeah. I was meant to, I've never met him, but I, the closest I got to meeting him, yeah. there was a competition on a radio show where you had to name which titles he had and what weight he was and everyone was getting it wrong. And yeah. I was like, I think I was about 10 years old mm -hmm. and I and I called up yeah. and I was like, um, WBO, IBF, <laughs> featherweight. And he was like, how old are you? I was like 10, he was like, oh no, you have to be 18 because oh, it's to win, no. uh, uh, like to go on a dinner date mm. with him and stuff like that. So, yeah. and I started crying oh, my yeah. eyes out. I was crying. My mum was like, oh, I said, mom, you should have done. You should have answered it and you could have gone and got an autograph. Oh, that was the closest I ever got. Yeah. I've never met him to this day, but hopefully I will one day no, though. You, you will, you will. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, then... So you come you come back, yeah. you, you had the fight at the fight zone That's in the one, Sheffield. Yeah. 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 You, you, well, how many rounds was that? Uh, it was scheduled for six, but I, I stopped him in four. Okay, so yeah. you, yeah, you stopped him in four. Yeah. And then we could move on to this Hamza Shiraz fight. So yeah. how did that even come about straight after just a one yeah. fight comeback? Do you know what? It was, man, I was in Sheffield um, like over a year and before before I, I got the Dow Arrowsmith fight, that, that was just that was just a run out sort of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, obviously, I didn't have no promoter, no, no nothing. So 
I was just looking for opportunities here and there. Like I'd done stuff like what I that weren't in my nature, like called out a few people and here and there. But people was probably think, looking at me thinking, like, oh, they don't really want to be fighting me. I'm a I'm a high risk, low reward sort of thing at, yeah. at that time. And uh but I was just happy to train and I knew an opportunity would come. Um so I I just yeah, so I think Dom Dom was like looking for a fight for me and I'm not too sure. I think he was in talks with, with Warren and an opportunity come, but to be honest, I think I think it was uh the World Week, the, the British champion at World Week who just uh E. Cal Essendon? Yeah. I think his name got m- mentioned. Okay. But I was like, oh, why am I why am I gonna fight for a British title which I've won yeah, out right now? And, yeah. and they was like, Oh, just get get back, like get get your foot in the door and listen, that's a good win and come back and let, you can just move up weight and do whatever, like just so your back, let people know your back sort of thing. And it's on a on a big platform. I said, all right, cool. But then that, that fight didn't happen. But then they come back and obviously mentioned the, the Shiraz fight. Yeah. And, and that was obviously up at 154, which probably was better for me to, to, to do 154. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I said, yeah, straight away. And um Dom, Dom, Dom was like, "Oh, like, do you know, do you know much about this kid? Like, I don't really. I've heard of him, but I don't know much about him." I said, "Yeah, he's good, but like, I, like, I, that's easy." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was so confident. I, I said, "Yeah, that's cool. Like, that's a good win. Like, he's he's stopping everyone at the minute." And that, that's I said, hey, "That's probably." Sam I yeah. said, "That's probably better than than the Asuma fight sort of thing." So I said, "Yeah, cool. We'll take that. We'll have that." And then. uh yeah, they they obviously that that it all got agreed, and then it come around pretty quick, really. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously that. What yeah, the that point, point, yeah. You know I mean? So he was boxing. Yeah, he's boxing rings around him. Yeah. He was winning the fight very comfortably, cool. doing your mm. thing. Like you was looking like mm. Bradley Skeet, which everyone knew, everyone yeah. remembers. But yeah. we didn't think yeah. you had still had in you. Yeah. I didn't think I was. No, it's been a, a lot, long time. You know what? A lot of people, and I'm I'm so glad I've done it. And obviously. He got gifted the win, yeah, but I come away like I won that fight because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was out the ring. Uh, like that was my first competitive fight in nearly three years. That like, listen, no disrespect to Dow Arrowsmith, that like, he's a journeyman and he was yeah, there yeah, to yeah. do what he was. That that wasn't I wasn't even out of first gear then with him, sort of thing. But listen, that's no disrespect. He was he he was there to do a job, but to then fight, step up against someone who's like on the up and. I like again knocking everyone out. No one gave me a, a hope. Like probably mm. not even my own friends. Do you know what I mean, they're yeah, probably yeah. thinking, "What are you doing?" Like yeah. I was thirty-four. Do you know what I mean? I'm I've been out the ring, and but I knew, I knew, I just knew. I said to Dom, I had a conversation with Dom, and say, "See this kid? Yeah, he come and spar, but I don't even talk, talk. I don't talk. See in press conferences, I don't talk. You know me. Yeah, I don't yeah. talk. But he'd come down to Ibox. He weren't even a pro then. He come down like a big." tall skinny kid coming down and he was scared like I was that's fainting him he was scared like so I knew when you're in the ring with someone you know so he's gonna remember that when when he's fighting me he knows what time it was yeah it's like, in your brain he was a fan like he probably <laughs> won the picture and all that after like yeah, he was a fan yeah, yeah. so I knew he couldn't step in the ring with me and think he could beat me yeah and that's how my mentality was that that's how it was that's why I was so confident and I showed him, I told him, oh, I'd, I'd punch his face in and I'd, I'd give him a boxing lesson. And that's exactly and that's what, what you I'd did. Done. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And then, you know, he decided to foul. Yeah. Um, and then what me, I was, I was thinking mm. you should have just stayed down because it yeah. would have been DQ. But yeah. do you, yeah. what, what, what do you know what? was I'll it? Was exactly just pride or this, ego? Yeah, what I'll was tell it? exactly how, how it was. Yeah. Um, like, do you know what? I didn't. I've probably done a couple interviews. So this, like this, I haven't even really spoke about it because people don't. I don't like. He speaks his thing here and there, telling people, oh, he didn't. He, at the angle he was at, he didn't see him on the floor. And that he oh. got boxed up for eight rounds. Like he didn't win a round. Like you could mm. not. Anyone watching? This is how controversial and this is what people don't see. Go and look on YouTube. Can't see the fight yeah. from start to finish. Go and look for that fight. You won't see it from nowhere. Like yeah. it's it's gone. Like all they're gonna show you is a little few highlights of him hitting me on the floor and yeah. then him get obviously stopping me the next round. Yeah. But you won't you won't see that fight. So anyone who can go and find it or if they've got it recorded or right, watch the fight from start to finish, you didn't win the round. But if you do um, post it, just know that Frank Warren's gonna flag <laughs> your up. channel. Yeah. <laughs> so but you know what I mean? Them, all that talk of oh, he was coming in back into the fight, he was coming on strong. He was not coming, nothing. nothing yet, he weren't no. going nowhere. Like he got frustrated. People 
I obviously don't see it all, but the round before he got frustrated and threw me down to the floor. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Then, then that was round seven, round eight. I dipped out low. He hit me on the back of the head, and that's when I took the knee. I was, I was fine. Obviously, I wasn't fine because it took made me take a knee. Do you know what I mean? You can hit hard. I hit to the back of the head. I took a knee. I was still fine. I would have took the eight count and I would have danced round him for the rest of the round and finished the round and finished the fight strong. Yeah. But that's when obviously was that frustrated. Had me on the floor and hit me three times. So I've seen people saying two times and he hit me three times on the floor. The yeah, last yeah. punch, he swung it back from Rose Ed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but that, I went that's down. From the, from, the, from the ashes in cricket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went down. Obviously, I was, I was down anywhere. So I went down and I just remember being dazed and looking at Dom. And then Dom was telling me to stay down. And uh, I was like, I thought, to be honest, I thought the fight was done. Like, that's how days it was. I thought, I, like, we're done sort of thing. And Dom was telling me to stay down. But then Steve, I remember Steve Gray coming over and saying, oh, obviously, like, take your time and whatever. And then I, I, I don't know if he went and took a point off or went and spoke to him or whatever. And then he come back, but I was still looking at Dom and he, and he stood in front of me. So I couldn't see Dom no more. Frank Warren's there screaming and shouting, telling him to get me up and waving his arms about. And I believe the ref like, like bottled it. And he basically told me, if you don't get up, I'm stopping the fight. Like, yeah. And to me, that was tell he was telling me, I'm like, the fight's done. It weren't a sense of people's thinking, oh yeah, he would have stopped it and you would have won. And it weren't like no, that. No, but the way, you, the, way, yeah, the way he mm. spoke to you, it he seems said, like don't get up, that I'm he's kind of fight. forcing your hand. Yeah. Is either yeah. you fight or we're calling yeah. it your, R, R, what's it, RTD? Is Retired, that, yeah. yeah. So what, what, like, in my head, I'm a fight. I'm, I've won the fight anyway. So, but I knew getting up, when it, when he got up and said, walk over there, walk back, I just, I weren't right. My head was yeah, gone, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. this, it was, and you could see straight away, I got up, I was all over the place. I wasn't the same fighter. And the round, he, he dropped me again. I think the round ended. I come out for round nine and I was, I was, and I just tried to meet fire with fire for the whole round. I've played with him and danced around him and I've just met fire with fire. And yeah, because you're groggy. It's like, what, yeah. what, for instance, last night, yeah. people were saying, oh, did Ben Davison stop it early? Like throw the towel, it was only eight mm. seconds to go. But when you're groggy, even would he have, it, would have, would have, a minute have been enough for yeah. him to recover? Probably yeah. not. No, no. And with your instance, you've just been fouled with yeah. four illegal shots, if you include the back of the head yeah, shot in exactly, the first yeah. place. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a shame, but that's yeah. always going to be a taint on his record. So exactly. people know you you was on your way. Yeah, you, weren't, you, know you people, weren't like you was nah, blowing. No, nah, I was fine. I was fine. Like Listen, you was, tired was, or something. Was, I was like fatiguing, yeah, but there was two rounds left. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing's going to change in, in two rounds than what it was in, in, in the 10. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he would have probably uh, what? He was, I bet he would have lost 8-2. If anything, he was gonna get more frustrated and make more mistakes and I would have just played with him even more. It would have been worse for him. But do you know what? Looking back at that fight, like I, I he got gifted a win. He knows he got gifted a win. No fighter will go have go bed and sleep and know that they've won that fight. Like mm. it, whoever's blowing smoke up his ass telling him how great he is and this and that, he knows deep down he got a boxing lesson. And yeah. That's why they were they were they were shouting about people was all shouting about the rematch of this and that like they yeah they did offer the rematch but again people don't know all this people, they was offering a the rematch and wanted me to rush they was giving me a date to rush me to the for the rematch but if you deep it I got stopped so I got twenty eight days so I shouldn't even be in the gym training yeah, but they're just so, trying to, yeah they're trying they're, to rush a recovery they, time they're trying to tell me about a rematch on this certain ninety date. days then I, I wasn't obviously going to be in the gym like I was I was at 28 days so I shouldn't even been in the gym no sparring no nothing so no way that date they set out was going to happen so that weren't going to happen then they gave me another date and um I think I think it was like a Joe Dress undercard but then that show got cancelled he wasn't he I think he, he when he broke his hand or something happened he, he yeah. I remember he had an injury or something he weren't fighting so the fight's getting put back but people don't realize this his manager come in my changing room telling me how bad he looked and how he shouldn't be fighting at 154 and how he's going to go up weight. So in my head, when they're talking about rematches, he ain't going to fight me at 154. Yeah. Like, as much as they can say, yeah, I'll fight you in a rematch. Rare, rare. His own manager come in the changing room and said, his days at 154 are over, he's moving up. And he did. And, and, which, he's done, and which he's done. So again, all the time he's talking about a rematch, Posturing. They know they won't fight me. No, no rematch yeah. at one fifty four. It yeah. would have made made at one fifty. Oh, what he's gonna foul weight and come in heavy and what am I gonna do? Then back out the fight and say, oh no, he didn't make weight. What's that gonna look like to me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People mm. don't see all this and know this, but like I say, he I've seen he's done interviews and say, oh, from his angle, he didn't know I was down in that. 
the man's six foot four. Like I'm six foot one. I'm what I'm down four foot. <laughs> I'm now four foot tall. Like he yeah, can't yeah. know I'm down. Like yeah. the man's backward. Like he knows what time it is. He knows he knows he got a boxing lesson. And to me, like I say, and people know boxing and and knows what's what. They they know like what what they know what was up. Mm. Like yeah, keeping it a buck. Brad, you know, you, you, yeah. you, you, you was on the way to victory and mm. that's that. But so now, so now you decided to retire, yeah. you know, you had enough of the sport. Yeah. They, you know, they've done you dirty. Mm. Then now you're, you're a coach. Yeah. How, how's that going? And tell us, tell us about yeah, it. Yeah. Wicked. Like, I'm enjoying it so much. Like I didn't want to be like that guy, like, do you know what I mean? To walk away from boxing and with a bad taste in my mouth. I, I have, don't get me wrong. Cause I got done dirty. Do you know what I mean? That like, the, the ref had a job to do and he didn't do it. Like he come in the changing room before the fight and telling me the rules and what's to not to do and what to do. Like, and out of his own mouth, he's saying, if you if you drop the guy, do, do not hit him on the floor, go to the furthest neutral corner, that all gets spoke about. So yeah, yeah. he had a job to do, do you know what I mean? He didn't do it. So it did leave a bad taste in my mouth, but I can walk away with my head high and know, know I, I achieve things in boxing, what I set out to achieve. And like I say, I'm a, train, I'm a trainer now and to pass on all my experience and, and what I've done and been through, like the good and bad, do you know what I mean? Like I'm saying, like when I went Bill Bow, I shouldn't really have been there. And like, so the good and bad, I've got all that experience, all that knowledge I'm passing on now. And I'm, I'm enjoying this this like journey now yeah. of, of being a coach. So, yeah, tell people where, you know, where you're training people and- Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm currently based at Ford's Gym in Alpington. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's where I obviously started doing my PTs and that. I was doing a bit of PT, but um, I've tried to obviously cut back on it now because I've got more pros now. I'm training a young kid, Robert Vinson. He just lost week, had, had his second uh, fight. He's, he's 2-0. Um, I've got John Dove fighting his debut on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm training Michael Hennessy Jr. Oh, Hennessy uh, Jr. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm training him now. He's had one fight with me. He's always had, he's had 13 fights, but one with me. And he, lo- he looked really ro- good in that fight. He stopped the guy. So he's doing really well. Excited for his future. Um, his sister Fran is a, is a, is an elite amateur, and I think in the in in the near future she she'll be looking to turn pro. Um, Louis Adolfi's back training now and got the oh, love wow. for the sport. Yeah, he's back. So yeah, it's exciting times. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, I see him. He's looking mad. Hench. He's big. Yeah, he's big. Yeah. He's got in the weights and that. He's big. But I've told him he wants to fight again. He's gonna drop the weight. But he's been like, listen, he's been in the gym. He's dropping weight. He's he's doing well. So to have him back as well is good. It's exciting and. Yeah, man, just hope I ain't forgot no one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just, but, well, no, well yeah, done. So you got your uh, pro coach's license. Yeah. So yeah, congratulations for that, Thank man. You. And that's that's really good what you've done there. So now we're going to move on to the penultimate round. You must know what this <laughs> is. A series of questions. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start. Let's begin. Red corner or blue corner? <laughs> blue. <laughs> Left hook or straight right? <laughs> Uh, straight right. Everlast or fly? Everlast. Cleo Rays or Grants? Grants. Rival or winning? Mm, winning. Nike boots or Adidas boots? Mm. Oh, that's a hard one. Adidas, old school. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, yeah, we're like, yeah, but now it's coming through now. No? Yeah, now, but <laughs> yeah. we're not. Adidas, yeah, we got school, a, yeah, we got to stick to our generation. <laughs> stick with Nas, <laughs> exactly. The yellow and the blue and gold ones. <laughs> Everlast or uh, Lonsdale boots? Everlast. York Hall or Royal Albert Hall? Oh. <laughs> I'd say York Cool for the old, like, I'll go stick with the old school, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tupac or Biggie? Mm. Tupac. Nas or Jay-Z? Nas. Ali or Tyson? Ali. Jack Johnson or Joe Lewis? Jack Johnson. Ray Robinson or Ray Leonard? Ray Leonard. Jimmy Lennon Jr. or Michael Buffer? Oh, Michael Buffer. <laughs> Mills Lane or Steve Willis? For lane. Spence or Crawford? Crawford. Baterbiev or Bivol? Bivol. Jamel Charlo or Triple G? Charlo. So Jamal Charlo, but yeah, you know, yeah. Just, yeah, Triple G. Uh, Devin Haney or Shakur Stevenson? Stevenson. Upcoming fight, Benavides versus Caleb Plant. Benavides. BMW or Mercedes? Mercedes. 
Audi or Lexus? Audi. Rolls Royce or Bentley? Bentley. Blonde or brunette? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> Uh, you could have left that one out no 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 I had more but I'm gonna there was a few more but I'm gonna allow you but I thought I've got to do that one uh, oh no I can't even do them ones there but I will do it I'm ones. going no. alright so for Rihanna or Megan Good I don't know who Megan Good is so she's an actress uh, no yeah Rihanna uh, Garage or House uh, Garage for music yeah Drum and bass or jungle? Uh, jungle. Oh, bro, good. <laughs> uh, R and B or slow jams? Slow jams. Dance hall or Afro beats? Mm, Afro beats. Soca or calypso? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Barbados, what are you good? <laughs> Soca. Yeah, come on. Uh, cuckoo and flying fish or Seuss? What's that food? Yeah, Bayesian food. Oh, flying fish. Yeah, and cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. about cuckoo? Yeah. You, you mean yeah. Barbados? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuckoo's fish, like, yeah. yeah, flying fish and cuckoo. Yeah. That's like the number one. Uh, fish cakes or saltfish fritters? Oh, fish cakes. Yeah, yeah. Because saltfish <laughs> fritters, Jamaican. So I, was, I, was there, so I knew you was going to do it. Uh, Mulby or sorrel? Sorrel. Uh, beef patty or saltfish patty? Beef. All right, for rum, Coxspurs, Mount Gay or Malibu? Mount Gay. Yeah, all three are <laughs> Bayesian rums. I love Malibu though. No, all three yeah. of them are Bayesian rums. Yeah. So, yeah, so all three. All right, I cool. I love Malibu. Evian or Volvic water? Mm, Evian. Yeah. Voss or Fiji? Uh, none of them. I don't like, I don't drink that sort of water. But that's the glass bottle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, It's like, yeah. fancy. Yeah, it's like, bad prices. <laughs> yeah. Cost of living. Um... <laughs> DJ EZ or Black Coffee? Oh, that EZ, that old school, but Black Coffee's all right. Yeah. Uh, city life or countryside life? Countryside. Lucas Aid Sport or Wow Hydrate? Lucas Aid Sport. Now you're a coach. Attributes you would prefer in a fighter? Speed or power? Speed. A boxer or a fighter? Boxer. What's more important to you? Footwork or hand placement? Footwork. Do you prefer to use conventional mid pads, mid pads, paddles, or the sticks? I I mix it up. I do. But what's your but, favorite? Mm, pads, I like pads. Yeah, normal yeah, pads. Yeah. Pads, yeah. Um, body belt or the circle drum thing? What's mm, it called? That? Yeah, I call it the disc. But yeah, yeah whatever uh, it is. Body belt. Uh, do you prefer orthodox fighters or southpaw fighters? Um, I'm easy. That both. I switch it up. I do the angle way. I switch it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Matroom or Queensbury? Matroom. Wasserman. Matroom. <laughs> oh my God. Gonna... <laughs> oh my God. Wasserman or Boxer? Boxer. Top rank or PBC? Top rank. Uh, Black Box Global or Goodwin Boxing? Black Box Global. Uh, Barbados or Great Britain? Barbados. <laughs> and that is the end. I love it. I love it. And that is the end of the penultimate round. So yes, man, thank you for coming on. Good it's been great having you on and I wish you all the best for your future endeavours and thank I look you. forward to seeing um, your fights come through. So that lightning kid, yeah. was that the one who he went to Dubai? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that ma- yeah. yeah, he's got yeah. enough confidence. Yeah, he's confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's, yeah, yeah. he met Naz in he that. Turned, he turned pro that when he was 15 and I think had his debut when he was 16 in Mexico but yeah he's had I think he's had his second fight now um I think he's got another fight coming up soon in Thailand so yeah he's doing his thing he's doing well oh man yeah, he's, that's he's good. very confident doing his, doing his thing yeah man so yeah thank you for coming on always done. Always love always, every always, time always yeah man and um yeah all the best and Wicked. yeah man big ups so that's it guys it's another episode of the neutral corner it's been presented to you by fight fan tv live Big up the show sponsors, Ragatonic, and we've been uh, blessed today with our special guest, Super Bradley Skeet, the former Lonsdale, well, former 
British title holder in the welterweight division, Lonsdale belt, kept it outright. And um, you held that record for quite some yeah, time. It's, it's only now, yeah, Ekal Essiman's yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, because yeah, when yeah. we spoke the first time, mm. no one had no done, it. done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, man. And that's what it is. It's Danny Glover, the master aficionado. We out.